And Northwest News, how police use red light cameras in Moses Lake might change. After a 21-year-old culinary student named Nicole Westbrook was killed in a random drive-by shooting last year, Seattle police had an idea for trying to identify the white sedan involved. They wanted to check for any photos snapped by red light traffic cameras nearby. But state law forbids the red light footage from being used for any purpose other than proving traffic violations. Changing that is a top priority of the State Prosecuting Attorneys Association in Olympia this year. Officials say it's rare that police need the information, but when they do, it's usually a big case. A bill that's been introduced to the House would allow them to get it with a search warrant. After a wildfire burned 37 square miles between Cleelum and Ellensburg last summer, some people were concerned about the 1,000 or so deer that spend the winter in that area. They worried if the deer would have enough food to survive. The Fish and Wildlife Department stated they're in fairly decent condition so far. A mild late fall and early winter allowed some brush and grass to sprout before the snow fell. And snow is not so deep or hard that deer overexert themselves grazing. Wildlife biologist William Moore told the Daily Record newspaper the deer are having a normal winter, but he says the most challenging survival time is still yet to come. Kenmore Air has been using Seattle's Lake Union as an airport since 1946 and has as many as 40 takeoffs a day, making it the largest seaplane operator in the United States. A proposal to build three 24-story apartment towers at South Lake Union seems like an obvious concern, but the airline says that's only a minor problem. The Seattle Times reports the flight path can be adjusted and the planes wouldn't have any trouble clearing 240-foot buildings. The airline says it's more worried about a growing number of boats on Lake Union and noise complaints from new residents in the growing area. After seven public meetings across Washington about a proposed coal export terminal near Bellingham, more than 14,000 comments have been collected. The comments will determine issues to be examined in an environmental study. State Ecology Department spokesman Larry Altos told the Daily Herald newspaper that a final decision on the terminal will come from his agency, the Corps of Engineers, and Whatcom, Whatcom County, and that's at least a couple years away. The terminal is the largest of five proposed in Washington and Oregon that would ship coal from Montana and Wyoming to power plants in Asia. Supporters say it would help the economy. Opponents are concerned about long, dusty coal trains and the effect on climate change from burning coal anywhere in the world. There were plenty of rifles slung on shoulders and pistols packed in holsters as hundreds of gun rights supporters rallied at the Idaho Capitol. An estimated 800 people showed up at Saturday's event it was part of an effort by gun owners across the country to show opposition to gun control measures proposed by President Barack Obama and lawmakers in many states. Mike Yost brought his two grandkids to the event and carried a Rock River rifle across his back. He told the Idaho Statesman newspaper, he's afraid we're losing our Second Amendment rights. The rally was one of two in Idaho. Gun rights advocates also met in Coeur d'Alene. That's going to do it for us here at iFiber One News. We want to thank you for watching, and we'll see you again tomorrow.